All right, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Walson. If you're like me and you were having some serious issues with defeating some of the bosses trying to play a pure mage, this is the build I came up with to get me beyond it. So it is primarily a plague burst and henchman build, so lots of followers. So first off, we have our Libor Mortis. And the Libor Mortis, I have increased health for summons, increased damage for summons, increased attack speed for summon, increased damage for summon, and a portion of the damage you receive is transmitted to your summon. So those bosses that were knocking me down, he's trying to help keep me up. And he's doing a fairly good job of it. So we are definitely able to get past, as you can see on level 51, all of the story bosses that I couldn't get past before. The next part of the build is the Plague Burst. And you can see that I have increased area of effect, ailment damage, ailment chance, leaves a poisonous cloud, increased explosion, increased crit damage, and increased crit chance. So it gives us a fairly big cloud. Anything that dies and it explodes, damaging others. And it leaves that poison on the ground to even further damage others. So next in the build is Solar Fall, which I have damage dealt by the area of effect increases over time. So the longer you smash it, the more it does. Increased tick rate, which just is more ticks per second. Area of effect increases over time, so it gets bigger as it goes over time. Increased chance to inflict ailments on enemies, which is weakness and poison in our case. Area of effect leaves a trail that damages enemies, so not only do they have the plague clouds to deal with, but there is a trail of holy damage. And increases crit chance. You gotta love the fact that you are putting down two different things on the ground that bad that is bad to stand in. Uh, we have the hunting swarm, increased damage for summons, arrow shot by summons can pierce enemies, increased number of summons by one because we want as many dudes on the board for other things to attack other than us, increased damage for summons, increased health for summons, and increased damage for summons. So. Your summons will put out a fairly good amount of damage, even though that is not the primary damage source for this build. Then we have the Feeding Swarm, which, again, is much like the uh, Hunting Swarm. We have increased damage for summons, increased damage for summons, increased summons by one, increased movement and health for summons, increased damage for summons, and increased health for summons. So those are our abilities, and as you can see, they're all roughly in the 50s, 52, 53, 51, 52, 52. I've been using them pretty extensively, and it got me through all the story mode. It has done me fairly well uh, in building my city so that I've been able to get a couple of the little projects done. Take a look at the Gates of Fate. I started out in the Scholar Tree. And my objective was to get down to Sacrifice of Flesh. Your maximum health and force shield is decreased, but your summons receive decreased damage. You lose 20% of your health and 20% of your force shield, but summons take 25% less damage so that they stand up and can be in the way. Because Liver Mortis can taunt stuff off of you. I went down and took the spell damage, took the spell damage and ailment damage, took the spell casting speed and damage, Drop straight into spell casting speed score and damage. Came straight down into plus 20 willpower on a hit. Plus 10% spell damage. Plus 16% spell damage. Plus 12% spell casting. Plus 4% spell, spell cost decrease. So things are hitting harder and doing more. Plus 10% damage dealt by summons. Plus 10% health to summons. Plus 10% toxic damage for your summons. Then drop down to 15% Toxic Damage, 10% Health to Summons, and then the Sacrifice of Flesh, which I also hit 
you lose 5% additional health, 15% force shield, but summons take 20%, so now we're at 45%. Now at 65%, now at 85%. So my summons take 85% less damage and pretty much keep me alive through all the story mode. They don't do bad in this mode, but as I picked up all the spell damage, I keep my uh, solar fall as just a massive way to destroy stuff. I did come down and pick up Faith Leech, or uh, the Life Leech headed towards Faith Leech. I didn't want it doing my uh, restoring Force Shield instead, but it helped out. I did go through and pick up all the other uh, Plague Bringer and Undertaker, or Undertaker and Toxic Emanations towards making my minions even more powerful. Swang over and picked up some willpower so that I could cast more often. And then found anything that reduced casting cost or increased spell damage. Now I did push down over here and pick up Blessing of the Jade Legion, which helps my toxic ring out, giving 50% damage converted into toxic. And then there's poison ailment, poison stack duration, and pretty much everything in between is all about doing ailment damage, spell damage, and keeping my minions alive. If you have any questions or comments, I really would appreciate some comments on this because this is what got me through. I don't know how good it'll do in the real end game. For right now, in the building of the city, it's doing just fine. I am working my way down into EOS because I was considering getting the Beacon for the Lost and just to see how it goes. So if you have any comments on that or know anything, I just want to make sure that my sacred damage being done by my solar fall is actually making out. I do have the aspect of Apocalypse on although I was running the Aspect of Dawn for a long time, and I really enjoy it, because I kind of feel like this is the Necromatic Cleric. I am wearing, I am using 349 Wisdom and 300 Toughness. I did bump these up just to get a little bit of attack crit chance and a little bit of attack speed and spell casting speed. I don't know whether anybody has any opinions out there as to whether you should focus more on anything. I just kind of balanced it out a little bit, keeping these two even and keep trying to keep these two as close to even with primary being wisdom and agility in each of the two different stats, as you can see the bonuses. Uh, you can see my details. I'm averaging 427 combat damage. My health is at 6,400 and my force shield's at 7,000. I am primarily focusing on force shield gear. However, anytime I get into something that was overly tough, I normally pick up a piece of resistance gear that I've been holding on to, and it tends to help me get through what I'm looking for. If you have any questions or comments about it, I would really appreciate anybody's input. I, like I said, it got me through the story mode that was really causing me some hate and discontent, and it has been doing it's not fairly well in the end game. And we will give just a little brief demonstration because I know that I don't really care to see people just running around killing stuff. But we will just give a little bit of a demo here and then we'll call it quits. I hope everybody enjoyed this build. I definitely enjoyed building it and I'm definitely enjoying Wilson. Uh, for anybody out there who would like to add a friend and need some help or anything, my tag is right here. It's gill.9566, and I would happily run Wilson with you. And here's our boss.
I need more power. That can't be done. And thanks for watching.